storage. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I've got George with me. He's actually hiding back there somewhere. Uh, but we are putting the Ebok Pro lift kit on the Santa Cruz. So George and I are doing this video with common hand tools. There is only one special tool you need to buy. Actually called widow makers or spring compressors. This lift kit overall is gonna be a faster install than all your spacers, but it is a little bit more dangerous because you have to take the springs off. Otherwise, we're just gonna jump into the install and go. Uh, one more thing before we get started. Um, we are keeping track of how long this build is going to take us. Just so we can give you guys an idea of how long it's gonna take you. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen all the lug nuts on the wheels. We're gonna loosen the wheels, jack the car up, pull all four wheels off. Be a man. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you look at the owner's manual, you know that right here, is uh, the jacking point. There should be an arrow pointing at it. There should be an arrow pointing at it. Uh, unfortunately, Jake likes gravel roads, so I can't find the arrow, but it is right here. I mean, this is going down like a slow. That's like a big ass tire. You know what you're doing? There you go. All right, next, we've got about 20 of these uh, pop tabs. We're gonna pull out all the pop tabs and release the splash shield. 12 millimeter to disconnect your ABS wire. 17 millimeter wrench for the sway bar and an eight millimeter socket to hold it in place if you don't have an impact gun. There's actually quite a bit of pressure on that thing. <laughs> I think I gotta press down on the sway bar to get it out. There we go, there we go. Your shock bolts and a knuckle, 19 millimeter for the bolt. 24 millimeter for the nut, because it will spin. And then improvise hammer. Okay. There's one, and she's gonna fight me. There we go, hand two. Okay, should not roll forward far enough to get that hub, or to dislodge that axle. Nah, she'll hold pretty fucking well. It's got that new car smell. Up top, your shock tower bolts, you got three, 14 millimeter bolts. absorber nut if you're using hand tools that's going to need a triple square driver a triple square uh, insert to hold the shock while you use an offset wrench to remove the nut on this thing uh, normal normal cars use allen wrenches not hyundai hyundai shocks use triple square so I'm gonna have to wait until morning to go get new tools. George is working that other side right now, but next is to uh, do the back side. So we're gonna put the rear springs on now. So we're gonna rip this tire off and then take the splash shield out. Uh, it's actually easier to do it that way instead of taking the splash shield out and then take the tire off. Right, George? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Who took this down gravel? Uh, there's nowhere to put a jack in the back of the car unless you want to use the pinch weld, but it's way up there. And then this is the subframe. There's nowhere to really put a jack stand on the subframe. So the best option I found is the trailer hitch. And yes, I'm using a supporting jack and when to pulling the tires off. So it's not just the jack on the trailer hitch, right? Okay, so for the back side, it's really nice to get that spring in. I already did that side. But this one is super simple compared to the front. This bolt, this bolt, and your sway bar nut 
right there. So these are 19 each, so you'll need a wrench and a socket. And then that is a 17. Your sway bar link is a 17, and it just comes out easily. And this whole arm will actually swing down out of the way. Buff. Oops. <laughs> it's supposed to do that. Push that down. And wiggle that out. Easy peasy. I'm gonna take this guy and put this isolator on it. You can see the old groove. So that coil is gonna sit right inside there. And then back up it goes. Mm -hmm. There's a little slot right there. That's where the spring ends. So, this part actually sucks because you have to push this down further than you want to. Putting a lot of stress in that bushing, but you gotta push that down so far to get this bigger, heavier spring in there. All the way down. And then spin it. Put it back in place. There we go. Almost. Actually, no. Because now that upper spring is not in the right spot anymore. Damn it. Yeah, now I gotta reseat that one up there. Well, that sucks. Low profile jack is the only thing that we have to scoot underneath this control arm with all that extra pressure now. So you gotta like lift up and squeeze that fucker under there. Nice swearing again. There we go. And begin pushing that back up. Except you gotta make sure your sway bar doesn't get crunched in there like that before starting over. Make sure it gets aligned. You can actually see through it where its hole is supposed to go. A little bit more. All right, tell me when. Go slow. Just a hair more. That's good. I looked up the torque spec for the control arm. It's 95 to 100 foot pounds of for these 19 millimeter control arm bolts. And then cut. Good morning. It is day two and we got special tools. And lucky for you guys, the special tools will not work. <laughs> so, uh, the triple square is, and I'm blurry, the triple square is an M10. The M10 goes in to hold that there. And we figured an offset 19 would fit. The offset 19 will not fit in the cup. So we were thinking about grinding it down, which is probably not a good idea, but even the special tools don't work. Unfortunately, uh, we had to give up on hand tools and we had to call a buddy. <laughs> so we're using his tools. This side is already done. We'll show you on the other side, but this, this is quite a project. Um, what we ended up doing was once the spring compressors were put on, we had to use an impact to break it loose before using the wrench to finally take it off. It's just way too much pressure on there, way too much force. And if you can find a better way to do it, better for you. But we did have to use an impact at least to break it loose. And yes, I am using a chrome socket with an impact. Otherwise we were just running into so many issues. The offset wrench will not fit in the cup. It just won't work. I cannot stress to you guys how important alignment is on the front shocks. It took us a little while with trial and error and spinning uh, the parts to make sure that everything is going to line up properly. The Eibach logo has to be facing out. 
your spring cup in there and there is paint the green paint has to be facing the engine bay over there and if you look closer the top hat is two pieces so to find out there's an arrow I'll show you that to find out there's an arrow there it is come on now the arrow points to the base of the shock. You also have little markers right here to make sure everything gets lined up towards the front. So I think mine's just even slightly, slightly off. So make sure all your markers are in the right orientation. You can see the back, the little notch back there has to be lined up with the back of the shock. Uh-oh, I found a problem. Okay, now we have the perfect correct orientation. There was a little slot that those two need to connect each other, but uh, you will absolutely destroy your nice silver paint. <laughs> so don't expect that to last very long. At least if you're using widow makers like me, Factory springs are pretty easy to compress, but you just work, work both sides, get these spring compressors down, and then you'll have to hit that uh, top hat bolt with an impact just to loosen it. When it comes to compressing the I-Box spring, it's, it's gonna be ridiculous, guys. <laughs> Out of there, and it detached. Okay. <laughs> Put that back in and we can pull our shock out. And I noticed that I, what I thought was aligned with this front arrow, this middle piece, and this bottom piece was actually a quarter turn off. And there's that blue marker, which changes this almost by half. So Again, I can't tell you guys how crazy orientation is. I'm not a full expert, and I can't find any information on this because we are guinea pigs. We are figuring this out. But that's how the orientation was before I took it off, so I'm pretty sure I'm correct. But yeah, that was spun over there when we were putting it on somehow, because all these pieces spin, and they all look a little different. So, yeah. Just be careful, take pictures, do all that stuff when you guys put yours back on. All right. And bring it around here. It's time. Whoop. It basically took us six and a half hours. But, you know, we were taking lots of breaks, kind of messing around, uh, pizza, and having to go get special tools. Hopefully you guys won't have to go get special tools. And filming, filming does take a lot of t extra time. Uh, so you guys could probably get it down a lot faster. Like I say, we're the guinea pigs, so that you guys hopefully can do it a lot easier without having a lot more headaches. Uh, so yeah, let's roll the car out of the garage. Booyah. Okay, so lift kit installed, and just as a reminder, iBox says these are 1.9 in the front and 1.5 in the rear. Pro lift kit, more of a leveling kit, still lift it a little bit. There's always a settling period with new springs, so uh, it will come down just a little bit as it starts to get the actual ride height of the vehicle. 
but uh, we can't go hard and go test it out thoroughly uh, without getting an alignment. So it's uh, off to the alignment shop. So we just got back from the alignment shop and we have the printout right here. So I'm going to show you guys all of that. Uh, it is a good thing that we got an alignment done. Uh, I could not feel anything different driving away from installing the lift springs, but you can see on the paper here that the toe and the rear was all messed up. And unfortunately, the front is messed up for the camber. Uh, there is no changing the camber from the factory and the alignment shop that I went through did not have camber bolts on hand. For you guys' information, if you want a perfect alignment, you're gonna need to pick up some camber bolts, and I'm not even sure which one specifically you're going to need as this is such a new vehicle. So now that we got the alignment all taken care of, we're gonna go ahead and go for a test drive and really review how these springs feel and a little bit how they perform. First thoughts of the iBox Spring Pro Lift Kit are really good, honestly. Uh, don't let anybody tell you that there is no change whatsoever. You will definitely feel a little bit of a change, just a little bit more bumpy than what you'll be used to on your factory suspension. And to me, that is an excellent trade-off. I am cruising at 75 right now and it is still smooth and honestly you can't even tell that you put the springs on there at least driving at highway speeds. Now it could just be my Santa Cruz specifically but every once in a while I do get a flutter of vibration, uh, a little bit extra bouncy every now and then but for the majority of it I would say that there's almost no difference in the ride quality at least when you're on pavement now that being said let's go try driving some gravel and see what that feels like <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. It's actually just a little bit more bouncy, and it's hard to say because it's not that noticeable at all. Even on gravel, it feels really nice, a lot better than my Subaru, actually. Like, the fact that it uses the OE shocks and just raises it just a little bit, they're still functioning the way they should. It's nice. Overall, 8 out of 10. I only say 8 out of 10 because I sent emails to Ibok asking you to sponsor this video and you would not return my calls, so now I'm petty. <laughs> but honestly guys, I, I, I recommend these springs, they're totally worth it. It is totally worth it for the extra lift, the extra performance of it, and I really like them. But I think that's going to be a wrap for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, hope you found it useful. I'm going to go ahead and link some more Santa Cruz videos down below, some more Overland videos down below, and that's going to be a wrap on this video. Alright guys, this is Jake, and I'll catch you later. Blinded by the light. I'm not going to use that clip. <laughs> what if I chuck that at the end of the video? <laughs>